up guys, Dungeon J here with Dustfall Gaming. Today we're going to be taking a look at Stories, The Path of Destinies for review. The game was released back in 2016 by Spearhead Games and is an action RPG. Before we start, I'd like to tell you that this video is sponsored by Take Your Money Insurance, where you give them a monthly payment and they make sure never to give back any on a claim. Want to feel protected? Think a future fender bender might be around the next red light? Then sign up for Take Your Money Insurance, the fastest, most unreliable way to empty out your pockets with no interest in the glass door review. Pick up Take Your Money Insurance on their website today. Day. Remember when you were a little kid and you got your hands on a storybook that actually impacted your way of thinking? Maybe it was Alice in Wonderland or The Wizard of Oz. Those magical lands that get your mind ablaze with the realm of possibilities. Well, Stories The Path of Destinies attempts to harness your inner kid in much the same way as a dog likes those little pieces of meat in those cheap ass packets from the supermarket. It tastes like and smells like the real thing, but in the end you don't really know what's inside of it unless you actually look at all the ingredients. And in this review, we're going to go ahead and see how close they got. Remember, if you like what I have to say, to subscribe. Gameplay and Storyline Storyline first. In this game, you play as Renardo, a charismatic fox fighting against an evil toad emperor. But at the start of the game, Renardo has hung up his swashbuckling shoes at the request of his dying mother. It isn't until his hometown is attacked by a drug-induced Hitchcock version of the birds in the form of muscle-bound ravens that he decides it's time to step back into the game. Being the only survivor, he escapes to town inside an airship a la steampunk style with a mysterious magical book. The book opens up to show his narrative choices much like that 80s fantasy movie the never-ending story where he actually lives through the experiences or maybe he doesn't it also aligns him to the moral choices good or bad then he gets a chance to retread that path with slightly different variations honestly the branching storyline gets really interesting as particular past may leave his friends behind but move him forward narratively for example he may simply just run off with his long-lost sweetheart and let the toad emperor do whatever he wants to the realms the branching storyline makes for a good time and a lot of replayability, which leads to the gameplay. The camera angle comes from a backed off third person isometric perspective. It also comes with the typical RPG fare we've seen in most modern indie titles of this ilk in the fashion of getting XP, unlocking new combat skills, and crafting weapons. Material is used to craft the weapons at the workbenches and can be found from a variety of different treasure chests littered across the landscape. Sometimes the paths to these treasure chests are obscure or gated behind ability unlocks like the grappling hook. As for the swords, they unlock a new way to fight, be it slowing down the enemies or restoring health, but they are also used as keys to open up the paths that Renardo had previously been unable to go down. The best part about skill progression really comes down to once unlocked, Renardo retains them at the beginning of each and every playthrough. The sheer replayability of this title cannot be overlooked and nor can the ways to block an attack. By the end of the game, having an almost full tool belt of abilities made the combat really feel engaging and interesting. One nice little perk about the combat system when versus the AI is that they scale with you if not a little bit ahead of the curve and allow for evolving combat to feel natural. Overall, storyline and gameplay both get a big plus in my book. Music and sound design. Doubt sunk in before he was even out of sight of the Farfarer. Why had he chosen the Sky Ripper? It was the sort of path he'd always avoided. The path of responsibility, of seriousness. Had he grown up? He didn't feel grown up. He'd made this decision from his gut, like he always did. Music first. I found the score to be original and at the same time very similar to most modern fantasy style games. Uh, bringing a lot of variety of musical instruments into the mix to give a light atmosphere with a slight ramp up in intensity depending on how deep in the storyline arc you are. It definitely pulls from a lot of the location. If you're diving deep into the catacombs or hopping across sky ships on your way to face the Emperor Toad himself, each gives a unique spin and never fills out a place. Next is sound design and I have to lead first with voice acting. Julian Casey needs a medal. I really enjoyed his tone and the way he explored the storyline settings. In all honesty, above everything else, the voice acting really stepped up what I felt a lot of these games lately are missing. Looking at his work, he also voiced Buck in Far Cry 3 
and that was impressive as well. It's just very rare we hear such a natural tone in storytelling without it feeling like they're reading a line of script, and he simply delivered it above expectations. Onto the combat FX itself, it felt fluid, and it didn't feel dampened down. Each clink and every crack had its own unique vibe. Doors opening, rocks crumbling away, and wind whipping in your face felt in line with what was happening. My final thoughts on the product are a little bit of a mixed bag. While the storyline, gameplay, and sound all hit really well, there were some minor technical issues. I didn't experience crashes, but at moments the game did feel a little sluggish, and while I don't have a maxed out PC, I definitely hit the above average needed to run this game. Looking at the specs, I think some low-end systems will encounter issues, and you might want to go ahead and keep that in mind when picking up this title. So lastly, as you guys know, I rate games as buy, sell, or forget about it, and in stories, the path of destinies is a buy. It's produced well, has a great story, interesting combat mechanics, and already sits at a low price point of $15 on Steam. The game offers up heaping sums of replayability and fun factor. Simply put, I had a blast. And anyone that enjoys light RPG with great storytelling will definitely get their money's worth out of this title. Well guys, that's it. That's another wrap for another review from Dustfall Gaming. And remember to hit that like button. Set up the bell notification for when I drop more reviews, usually about two a month. Or subscribe if you haven't already. This is Dungeon J signing out. Have a great day gaming. Later. I'm just walking the line and there's nobody with